statistical process control, variable control charts. In order to control uh, some measurement, uh, we will use uh, variable control charts, and they always are used as a pair. Uh, they are called X bar chart and R chart. And uh, in, uh, in, in the process of setting them up, first of all, we have to decide what we want to measure. In our example, it will be the height of steer support, where steer support is a part of, um, of a scooter that we're producing, and we're really concerned that this height is, uh, is, uh, is accurate for all parts. Uh, then we will decide how often to collect a sample. So remember, of course, we want all parts to uh, satisfy certain um, um, requirements. However, for, for statistical process control, we just want to make sure that, um, that uh, this variability is controlled by selecting a sample of parts every day, right? So in this case, we will decide um, that the sample will be collected once a day. And we will also have to choose how large the sample has to be. Uh, again, uh, we will decide here for the sample size to be n equal 5. This, of course, should be larger if we want the distribution of sample means to actually be um, uh, very close to normal distribution. But just uh, in order to keep our example small, here the number is, is, is just 5. In practice, you could, cr you could uh, collect larger samples in order to have um, a more accurately um, the distribution of sample means approach the normal distribution. And of course, then we will have to collect samples. So when every time we collect a sample of n values, in this case, five values, for each of those samples, we will calculate mean value. We'll call this x bar. Right? This mean value will be just calculating as the, as calculated as the sum of values divided by n. And we will also calculate the range of those five values or n values, which will be maximum minus the minimum of those values. So once we have all those, we can set up the charts, so we can create the, the initial X bar chart and R charts. Remember, we always use both at the same time, and we create them using uh, some initial samples. Right? For example, we'll, in, in, in this example, we'll use 25 initial samples. So this is, let's say, we collect uh, a sample every day for 25 days, and then we are ready to set up those two charts. How do we set them up? Well, for each of them, we will need a central value, which will be a mean, right? And this, those means will be, for the X bar chart, there will be the mean of X bar values, which will be the note as uh, X double bar. And there will, for R chart, will will be the mean of R values, which will be denoted by R bar. Bar is added just to recognize this as uh, an average of something. So double bar means a mean of means. Also, we will need like uh, some kind of upper and lower values beyond which we, we do not expect the measurement, uh, the, the, um, the X bar and R to go, right? So uh, they, are, they will be called uh, upper limit, upper control limit and lower control limit, uh, for short UCL and LCL. Of course, there will be a UCL for the X bar chart, and uh, for R chart, and similarly, lower control limit LCL for X bar chart and R chart. And the way they are calculated is we just, uh, for, for the X bar chart, we take the mean of means, X double bar, and we add something that is actually equivalent of three standard deviations, or subtract something that is equivalent of three standard deviations. For the R chart, uh, they will be calculated as uh, the uh, the mean value multiplied by some parameter d4 or d3. Those parameters can be found uh, uh, for, for all values of uh, sample size, so they depend on the sample size. In our case, its sample size is 5, and you see the parameter a2 here in this first or uh, second column, and then d3, d4 for the R chart, so a2 happens to be here and here and D4 here and here. They, they actually, in, it is possible nowadays, of course, to calculate three standard deviations here, for example, from the data. But uh, uh, traditionally, these parameters uh, A, A2, D3, D4 have, have been computed. And uh, uh, this is the way the charts have been set up at the time where uh, these uh, calculations were too hard to do uh, too frequently. So uh, uh, this is the tradition. You could, of course, replace this by three standard deviations, for example. 
Now, once we do the setup of the control charts, uh, right, the pair of charts, uh, remember this is something that we should be doing once um, when the process is stable and never repeat until there is some kind of significant change in the process where we would expect a change of variation um, happening due to uh, assignable cause that is done on purpose. Right? Uh, once we set up the, the chart, we should then control the process. And actually, this is the whole purpose of those charts. We want to use them to control the process. And how do we do that? Well, we continue collecting those samples. Right? In this case, every day, collect another five units, calculate the mean, calculate the range, and add uh, the chart uh, to, the ch to each chart, of uh, X bar chart and R chart, add a point, and see if they are still uh, showing as uh, the process uh, being in control. Right? So we update those charts regularly, and we use those charts to control the process. So what do X bar charts and R charts look uh, here is an example. So the first step will be setting them up. So as I said, the measure is height of the steer support uh, for scooters. The data collected over 25 days, each day uh, five samples, right, will be denoted X1 to X5, right? Here is the data that I have collected. Again, I just show you a few uh, rows, right? But remember, there is a total of 25 samples over 25 days, and these are the measurements. We measured them very accurately, right? So this is in millimeters, and it's measured to the fourth, fourth digit after the point. And then, of course, the mean and uh, the range are calculated. They are shown here in the last two columns. And then we calculate the mean of means. This is the value, 79.9512, and the uh, average range, right, which is, in this case, 0 0.02057. And uh, then for X-bar chart, we calculate the upper control limit, the mean, right, the mean is already calculated, and the lower control limit. So remember, we calculate them using these A2 parameters and multiplying here by, uh, actually, this is by uh, R-bar. And we get these values. So this is a little bit higher than the mean. This is a little bit lower than the mean. And similarly, for our chart, we calculate the, um, the upper control limit, taking the average of the ranges, multiplying it by the, four, the D4 parameter and by D3 to get the lower control limit. And of course, the central tendency is calculated as R bar. So this is what we see once we set up the chart. Uh, as uh, the, the, with calculations that were showed just a moment ago, right? And you see, of course, I'm, I'm putting here the upper control limit, lower control limit, and the central tendency. So these values, the X bar, X double bar, 79.9512, is the value on the vertical axis here, right? Uh, they look very close, right, to each other, uh, right? Uh, but they are somewhere here. And then the lower control limit is, is this line, and then upper control limit is this uh, green line here, right? Similarly, for the R chart, right? For the R chart, we see the R value, the, right? This is the X bar value. I, I put here a text, although this could be changed to X uh, with a bar above the X, right? Here is R chart, and for the R, we also have the average R value, the upper control limit, and the lower control limit. These three lines are corresponding values. So, of course, what you would expect is after you set up the chart, the values that are measured over those first 25 days fall within the upper and lower control limits. Now remember, setup is done once, and then we want to uh, control the process by controlling the measurement that we defined as critical. Right. So remember, this is a height of steer support. Uh, what we need to do is every day, Right? We decided to collect a sample of once a day. Every day we update the chart. Right? So after five days, we might have a chart that looks like this. We have day 26, 7, 8, 9, and 30. Right? Up to day 30, we have new points. Every day, right, we go and select randomly. This should be actually proper random selection, not uh, some first five samples or last five samples. Right? But uh, last five units or first five units, which should be uh, we collect randomly five units, we calculate the X bar average of those measurements, right? 
and we calculate the range of those measurements and we put them on the chart and we should see something like this and that indicates the process is actually in control because uh, the variability looks normal it is within the upper lower control limits on both charts now suppose after uh, seven days right on on seventh day after we set up the chart on day 32 we observe something like this the point for the range right for the measurements is actually above the upper control limit so notice this one is still within control limit maybe it's a bit high but it might happen in randomness right and this one is uh, out, outside of the upper control limit what does this mean well, it means that uh, the process uh, might be out of control. It's actually very likely out of control. And why do we uh, know this? Well, again, because we know that if this, uh, th these charts, uh, the, the, the measurement that we're looking at has normal distribution with plus minus three standard deviations being represented by the upper and lower control limits on both charts, right? Um, then... Uh, we know from the standard normal distribution or normal distribution uh, we should be with 99.7 more than 99.7 percent uh, chance within those limits so if we suddenly have a point there is a very tiny that is outside of those limits there is a very tiny probability that this actually is a normal behavior of our process and if it is unlikely that it is a normal behavior then there might be a cause for this uh, change this is actually we might say very likely this is uh, abnormal behavior there is uh, an assignable cause for this very likely and so in that case we should investigate what happened to the process why is this range suddenly outside of what we would expect right we would expect no more than 0 0.04 millimeters of uh, random change but this is even higher than uh, 0.05 so right that that is a way for us to detect something is wrong we don't know yet what but at least we have a signal uh, that is uh, saying uh, investigate something happened uh, find out what happened and uh, hopefully eliminate in the future in order to avoid quality problems so when is the process out of control well uh, when we have an entry for any chart that is outside of its con control limits for that chart, meaning it's above upper control limit or below lower control limit, then we know that there is a 99.7% chance that the process is out of control. Uh, why do we know this? Well, because the probability that a random value taken from a normal distribution, which this chart is showing, right? A sample means follow a uh, normal distribution is not within three standard deviations of the mean, the probability of this is just 0.3%. So in other words, in presence of only common causes of variation, the likelihood of this entry being outside of the uh, uh, um, right outside of control limits is just 0.3%. And notice that actually, uh, you know, we didn't put any other control limits, but the further above the uh, an upper control limit or the further below the lower control limit that the entry is, the more likely the process is actually out of control. There are other patterns that can be uh, considered uh, um, indicators of process going out of control. For example, if you have eight subsequent points, all of them above or all of them below the center line this also indicates a need for further investigation this might be an indication that the process went out of control because remember in a normal distribution the likelihood of having eight uh, points above the mean is right each of them has 50 percent chance so eight in sequence have the, uh, the probability of 0 0.5 to the power of eight which is just about 0 0.4 percent i.e. this is very unlikely and actually other statistically improbable patterns may be pointed out but this is just an example of another pattern but the most important indicator that the process is out of control is the entry in the any chart is outside control limits <laughs>